Okay, so I wanted to kind of explain uh, more of the GUI because I know the uh, one GUI video that I have probably isn't very good or, you know, I didn't really go into a lot of detail, perhaps. Um, and I apologize for that because the last time I taught this class, it was like right when all the COVID stuff happened. Now, I'm not going to like, I probably won't go in. Uh, like, there's a lot of things I'm going to skip over because I just feel like there are things that you can go and learn on your own. Like, I'm not actually testing you on any of the GUI stuff, but I am going to make projects for you guys to do that are going to use GUIs. And so you guys need to be comfortable creating and using GUI classes. So what I did is I just went through all of the lecture slides that were given to us by the book, and I just copied and pasted all of the GUI sections into this one PowerPoint that I labeled GUI that... Uh, or just GUI. I didn't name it GUI. Uh, you can find this inside of the Dropbox content folder that I shared with you guys under the lecture slides. There's 233 slides. I know that seems like a lot. You don't have to go through all of them, but I mean, if you if you go through all of them, I mean, a lot of the examples are real working examples, and they're actually pretty good. I don't really use the JavaFX library very often, or actually at all. The only time I use it is just within this class. So there's still a lot of it about it that I don't actually know. So a lot of this is new for me as well. But I kind of wanted to go through the things that um, that I want that I want you to be comfortable with. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So uh, if you watched the previous videos, you should already know how to make a JavaFX application. The first section explains uh, JavaFX and how to actually get started. Where you need uh, you need a group, and then you kind of put everything into that group, give it to a scene, and then from the scene uh, you pat you throw that into a stage, and then you show your your stage. And then you get, you know, like a GUI that just has some text on it. And the next slide, the, the, like this actually started in chapter three. And the next slides talk about like making lines and basic shapes, rectangles. It's all actually pretty cool. I, I mean, I recommend everybody just go and like kind of play with this a little bit. bit. Um, and then you can make an application like that. That was just them making ovals, making circles, making text and like positioning them like within the grid. Now, if you actually look at some of this stuff, you're, the way it's laid out is the corner of your application is zero, zero, and then it's like on an X, Y scale where the height is Y and the X is the, the width. Okay, so that's kind of how it's done. So when they, in this example above over here where they printed out this Hello Java FX, if you look, they actually put that at 50, 50, so that means that this hello java fix is you know 50 this way 50 this way and that's like the location of where it appeared uh let me just kind of thumb through this all all this i'm not gonna really go in a lot of detail they made a snowman with all these shapes that's actually kind of cool um they talk about uh how they did all of that and i yeah okay you can go through that if you want like I know like doing graphics and stuff like that actually sounds pretty cool, but I want to focus more on like applications where you uh, press a button or read in a text box. All right, so their next example is importing an image. That's actually pretty cool as well. You have an image, you just basically, uh, you know, put it within your project and then you can just create the image and then make an image view. And then they put it into a, what they call a stacked pane, so they're not using a group anymore. And then they passed in like this property to where they set the background color to to be uh, corn silk. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can probably do that also by just invoking the background color straight through the pane uh, object. Um, and then from there they passed it to a scene, and then they passed you know they passed the scene to the stage. That's actually kind of cool to do. Again, um, I'll leave that up to you to look into. The example that I wanted to do, the next example I wanted to do was the time one. Okay, the push counter. This is actually a pretty cool one. The push counter. So they have this push button and then they have a text that gets updated on the, that like every time they actually push um, that button. So let's see what they did because everybody does Give you stuff a little different. Uh, I missed their code. All right, so what they did was they, they created some variables. They had a count, and then they had a text called 
Because they basically just updated the text. Like they have the pushes and then a zero, then they have a button. And then on the action of this button, you actually pass in a method that's going to get called. But they use this because the this process, the button press is actually created within their uh, class of where they have their driver class. And that's where they uh, have this uh, process button method. They created a flow pane, which uh, just kind of flows depending on how you do your alignment. So it looks like it can go left or right. And they put in their push button and then they put in their counter text. They set in uh, the H gap is like, you know, how far apart you want to set something. And then they set their color and they created a scene and they did set the title and then pass. Okay, this is actually pretty easy. Okay. And then they this event here takes in an action event and they really just pass that method in there and then that method just increments the counter and updates the text. So in, for this to work, that means that your counter and your the text that's getting updated has to be actually um, outside of the main method. So how do they do this? Start, where's your main method? Did I actually show you how to do, how to, okay, well, I'll, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do this example. Okay, so I have, I already named this GUI project one, which now seems like a bad name for this. So um, I'll probably just delete this. Let's go ahead and make a new project. And I'm gonna name this one push counter. In anything that's a GUI, I am going to start maybe putting GUI in front. GUI underscore then push counter. Just so that you, when you look at the project, you know which ones have GUI um, or have like are using JavaFX. So I'm going to do GUI underscore and the name of the project I want to give it. Okay, so I'm going to hit finish. And this window, and then I'm going to come over here to source. And then I'm going to go to new class. I'm going to make the class. I'm just going to call it a launcher. Or, dang, maybe, I don't, yeah, I'll call it a launcher. It's a launcher class. Okay. So the launcher class is going to extend the application class. Okay, so uh, if this is happening to you, I just actually made a video on how to fix this. It looks like I have to do this every single time. Is I'm going to have to come over here to file, then go to project structure. Uh, project structure and then I'm gonna have to go to libraries dang it and I'm gonna have to like add this every single time which is gonna be kind of like really annoying so it's best to just get like 1.8 the JDK 1.8 but if you don't have JDK 1.8 if you have like 15 or 11 it looks like every single time you're gonna have to go to that library and add it to your project so I'm gonna go to uh, program files because I have mine extracted to a folder called JavaFX. And then I'm going to select JavaFX and then hit lib and then hit OK. All right, I'm going to hit apply. OK, and then come back over here. It's happier now. Um, I can just import the class and I'm going to choose the JavaFX application. OK, so it's still a little upset at me. And the reason why it's upset is because when you extend the application class, you have to implement the methods and the method I want you to implement is start stage. Okay, so this is gonna be my main method as well. So my main method, or my main method, this is gonna be my driver class as well. So my driver class is gonna have the main method. So I'm gonna say PSVM, press enter, and then I'm gonna say launch, and then pass in the args, and that's gonna launch the application, and then the, when the application launches, it's gonna start in the start method. Okay, so what they did in that push counter is they had up here they declared something called uh, count and they named it like they had it um declared as they actually didn't have static on it for some reason i guess they didn't want to confuse i guess that example is actually pretty confusing if you're doing it on your own because you're gonna need we're gonna need an instance of this object uh, yeah there's um we're gonna need an instance of an an object in order to use this count if we don't make it static. I don't know if that makes sense, but it does to me. So 
I'm going to go ahead and make this static int count and we're going to initialize this to zero and that's going to be the count of how many times you push that button okay and then we have to make another variable for the text a static variable for that text and that's going to be the text that we're actually going to update which is also going to be uh, static as well so this might get a i guess a little messy i would i would i feel like it's getting a little messy so you know what this is what i'm going to do i'm not going to extend application from here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to source i have this launcher class okay and the launcher class is just going to create an application and then launch that application so from here what i'm going to do is make a new class i want to call this one push button application application okay all right sorry for the confusion but i just kind of feel like this is a cleaner way of doing it and this is going to extend application okay and this is going to implement the start method and then over here we can have private variables int count and private text and uh text i guess we definitely want to name it that's kind of a generic let's say uh count text i guess i don't know i can't think of anything better okay i'm going to hover over text over here and i'm going to import class and go to java scene text okay so this is almost just kind of think about this like its own little object where you have some instance data and then you have this method that is going to start your scene and then you have this data over here which is going to uh, essentially just kind of live globally within this object so we have the count and we have the count text and the reason why it has to live globally is because we're, they they're passing a method to that uh button action right or was yeah, it was called button action or action event i can't remember exactly but uh, we're passing a method that we're going to use inside of there. And that method was, uh, I already forgot what it was, but it was public. I think it was void. And we'll just name this like do action. Okay. And it took in an action event. JavaFX action event. We'll say event. And then from here, what they did is they incremented the count. And then they took their text and I mislabeled this count text. I should have labeled it with a lowercase c. Count text, and they set the text to be uh, push, damn it, push count is, and then they put in the count. Okay, that's like the event that we're gonna do, and I don't know why I made this the capital D. I should just do a lowercase d because that's our coding standard, right? Methods and variable names uh, start with the lowercase letter. All right, so I have this do action. I'm gonna hop back over to the slide really quick to make sure it was a void action event, right? I just basically copied this, okay? Um, now what they had over here, not their start method, is this is where they instantiated their count text. They said it was a new text, and then they basically just did this here actually did this here okay and they said it was zero all right and then they had a button object and then we'll call this one push button is equal to new um button okay uh intelligence is a little upset about at us highlight over here we got to import this class. We want to go with the JavaFX button. Okay. And inside of here is the text that's going to be on the button. And we'll just say like, we'll say push me. Be really aggressive about it. So we're shouting at the user. All right, so push me and then the push button. This is where it kind of gets a little weird is, and we'll, we'll talk about what's going on right here. So push button, we're going to set our action or on action event hmm. set on action was it set on action and then we said this and do action okay so with the java 8 there's like this weird 
thing that you can do or you just reference the object like you're just passing in the the method into this uh, set on action and as long as this signature matches the anonymous inner class the, the class that you need to use within this on action then everything's okay so just for now let's just say whenever we want to push a button we need a method that is going to be void right it's going to be public void and it's going to take in an action event okay so that action event is going to be passed in whenever they click the button we can actually look at this object right here that's coming in we can just we can just do something like system that out that print line and then we can just print out the event just to see what it's all about um, you can also look at what attributes are on this event by just putting like a little dot here and then just say like get event type that's that's interesting right you can do also do i saw there's a get target get target all right and that's going to print out to the console all right so this is what's happening so far we have our text which is going to say push count to zero but then whenever they push that button we're going to update it to push count is whatever the count is we increment the count every time the button is pushed here's our button object and then we're going to make something called a flow panel or flow pane and we'll just call it flow pane is equal to new flow pane and damn i forgot if they put the size in here oh no the size goes in the scene so then in the flow pane what they put in here is the order in which the components are going to appear and the first one is a push button and the next one is the count text okay and then they did something where they if you look back at the example they like did some weird thing where they set the background color i forgot what it was but um I'm not going to do it. I just think it's look confusing. You can do it if you want, but I, I don't see why we can't just set background color from here. Yeah, we can't. Oh, we, have, we need a background object. This can get like super confusing. So background. Background empty. Background color. No background. Okay. Yeah, this is getting like really really confusing I, like i said i'm new to this as well but it looks like we need to create a background object and then with that background object we specify a bunch of attributes um but what the book did which i'm probably gonna have to just do is they went ahead and just passed in a, a style and they did dash that or dash fx dash background color and they passed in the color now if you remember you can also pass in the color through the scene so i'm gonna go ahead and do that they also have this horizontal gap which is going to like put some gap between the these two components we'll do it after the after we run it and then they have this alignment which is going to essentially just align the components in the middle of the of the pane okay and then in the scene is where they actually set their height and the width so what i'm going to do for now is i'm just gonna like not worry about setting the background color here and then i want to make my scene object and we'll call it scene okay so from here i'm going to specify my size let's just go with let's just do 500 by 500 i don't have anything better than that okay and then we'll go we'll pass in our scene or not our scene dang it our faux bang and then from here i believe you could just set the color so we'll just do color and let's do a custom color so if you do a custom color I don't know if you see this but you can actually just pass in uh doubles for the values or integers somewhere i saw an integer somewhere uh, but we'll just do color and then okay uh it's upset at us it wants us to import the right color class so i'm gonna say import class and actually no i figured it out for us it imported the java effects okay so if you remember this should be a one so so it's red, green, blue, I believe. Yeah, red, green, blue, RGB. Um, so if we want to do like a green background, uh, we would just turn off, we would set this to zero, this to one, and this to zero. Now it's still upsetting me. So I think maybe it's not taking a color. Okay. 
So it says it's an integer. So we make them all doubles. Come on, be happy. Be happy. Oh, the constructor is not. I guess it can't pass in a background color if I'm using a pane. Dang it. So it's only when I'm using a group that I can pass in a background color, it looks like. So I don't have the documentation set up, but I'm going to come over here and just look at this. All right, uh, I'm trying to see what are my options on my constructor. And OK, I'm just going to leave the background color off. I thought I can do that there, but apparently I can't. And oh, I have this backwards. OK, that's the problem. OK, this is why I hate doing this not in the class. Somebody would have been like, oh, sir, you're doing this wrong. OK, so flow pane goes there. And OK, there you go. That's what the problem was, was that I have to pass in the, the pane first and then the width and the height. And then the last thing is the color that I can pass in. And that should give us a green background. And then what I'm going to do is, oh, it's kind of cool. You can preview the color right here. So that's that green is just, I don't know. Let's mute that green a little bit, like not so bright. We can do that by maybe just doing like 5 or 0 0.5, doing half of the value. And you can see it like it's a little more, it's a little darker. All right, so I'm going to say stage and then set title. And then I'm going to call this one push counter app inside the title. And then I'm also going to pass in the, or set the scene, pass in the scene. And the last thing is to actually show scene dot show. I'm sorry, stage dot show. Dang it stage dot show all right there you go so we have everything set up so basically i have this object that is going to do all of my application so i'm going to go back to my launcher class i no longer want to inherit from the application class i do want to call it launcher though i'm going to go ahead and delete this import right there i can probably also delete this stage import as well i don't really need any imports now that i think about it okay so i can delete this and wow well, there's a lot of stuff i can delete I can, okay so this is what i'm left with and go ahead and delete this launcher. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use application and then we're going to call launch and then we're going to use the name of the class that we want to launch. I believe it's just that class and then pass in the args that we're going to pass in. And this is going to launch the application that we just created in this class. So the launcher is going to use this application class, right? Um, and this is just the class. So this launch is actually a static method. And then we just pass in the class that we're going to use and then we're going to send in our arguments okay so it's pretty simple it's just we don't have to do like the traditional send you the object and then call the method on it so from here what we're going to do is just run it hit the run button and we can see the gui that we just created okay there you go push me and it's moving up that's actually like really exciting stuff okay but let's play with some of the stuff that the book was using Okay, so I want to come back over here and the first thing I want to do is I don't like how these two components aren't actually centered. So what I'm going to do is come over here to flow pane and I believe it was like center. What was it? Center? No. Um, actually, let me just look at the here. Go set alignment and then we passed in position center. Okay, so set alignment and then position and then center okay perfect okay and then they set like an h gap which is going to be like call space between the two components but i can show you what that what they mean by this i'm going to stop my app and rerun it so you can see that this is now centered but there's no space right here so you want to set the horizontal gap by saying like flow pane dot uh, gap dang it i should have remembered what i just saw so sorry so horizontal gap um set h gap okay set h gap set h gap and then i'm going to pass in 
uh, 20. Well, they had a 20. Uh, let's just go at 50. See what that looks like. I'm going to hit save. And then, actually, we don't need to save until J. It auto saves. I'm going to rerun this. And there you go. Okay, there's other things. If you're reading through the, the document or the slides, uh, there's other things that I think are actually kind of important too. Like you can actually set the font size of this. So you can come over here and just make a new font called font or yeah, um, let's call it like text font. And you can give it this, you can give it a size to say we want it a little bigger. We want, we want it to be 24 and we're going to have to import this class. We use the JavaFX font. And we'll take this font and put it in our context. We'll just say like set font and then pass that in right there. We'll go ahead and run this application. And you can see this font's bigger. You can sit here and press this and all day. Okay, so um, back to what we're talking about with this whole do action. This is actually really convenient. I actually prefer this the way of doing this. Um, but if you go back to the method that we're trying to invoke, or yeah, right here, if you actually look inside of what's asking you for, it's wanting you to pass in a an event handler class, or you can do like the anonymous inner class. Like you can use Lambda expressions in the later Java. If you're using Java eight, I'm not sure if you have access to the Lambda expressions but you can just come over here and essentially just say what the method is gonna do like in place right here. So I can just copy all this and just slap it in right there. And it should work just the same. So if I come over here and comment that out because I'm no longer using it and just moving all the content over to the set on action inside of this land up expression is just gonna run all these statements. So when I run, Get my application and you can see it works just the same. So one of the things that is happening that I forgot to look at is when I actually press that button, like I'm putting stuff to, I'm also printing stuff out to the console because I have this system out print line. I just clicked the delete button and deleted it all. But if I come back over here and press this one more time, you can see that I was just kind of just dumping the event and dumping the target out to the, uh, the console. So that's like another way of doing it. Like if you just, like you want to avoid having to do this do uh, action, you can also make the entire class. Like so in Java before Lambda expressions, um, we actually had to make the entire class where we do something uh, like we'll say like new uh, event handler action event, press enter. And it basically just, we're making what we call an anonymous inner class. And then inside of here is where we will do all those actions. Okay. Now I pref like I like doing it this way before. Uh, having it outside, like the way here, I actually think it's is actually really cool. Like you know, that's probably the better way of doing it. Um, but if it's just something like really quick, I prefer to use anonymous inner class. But now that we have lambda expressions. I, f I really feel like the, this lambda expression way is probably the simplest way to do this. You still get the event being passed in. You can still use that event. It's basically what you're passing in, the dash and the arrow, and then the curly braces. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that syntax, um, just let IntelliJ like auto complete it for you. So like when I just came over here and I just typed in, like I didn't know what to do. I did a control and a space. Then it kind of gave me some options to throw in there. The first one was this event handler, which has like a Lambda expression. I just press enter and then I put my uh, curl, my open and close curly brace. If you're only, if you're only gonna do one action, like uh, what's one action? System out print line test, then you don't need the curly braces. But if you're gonna do multiple actions, then you're gonna need the curly braces. Because if you come over here and try to type something else, it's not gonna work. I don't think it will, hold on. Let me just test this before I put my foot in my mouth. Okay, yeah, it's not working. You can see the red. So uh, if you're not going to use, like if you're only gonna use like one uh, statement, then don't use the, don't, we don't have to put the semicolon, it's like you're just passing one statement. 
then you don't need to put those curly braces. And when you run this, the only thing we're doing is printing test out to the console. So when we press a button, we'll just see test like pop up in the background when this, right? Um, but if you're gonna use multiple statements, then go ahead and use those curly braces. If you wanna like, if you prefer doing it like the anonymous inner way, right? Where you're, you're just gonna like, you don't wanna like make another method. You just like wanna do all the button actions right here. And we just slap that in there and it's actually like really, really neat. Uh, like I said, up to you. I'm not grading you on any GUI stuff. Uh, I actually think making the method outside is probably the better way of doing it. That way you don't like have a bunch of statements like inside of your start method. Um, but either way is fine. Um, but just, you know, find something, get comfortable with it, learn how to use it. And understand that GUIs are all event driven. So you're going to actually be doing a lot of, you know, a lot of this where you make the methods or use the um, the Lambda expression or create anonymous inner classes. You're going to be doing a lot of that inside of in, when you're mess when you use GUI applications.